What if you wake up tomorrow and find out that the issue of mortality has been solved? Humankind has achieved immortality. Will you do something crazy to test it? Or would you be content in your own life? Now I want you to consider this scenario where you are immortal but not invulnerable meaning you can still suffer from bad habits you can still suffer from diseases but you will never die so whereas all these questions that i'm talking about right now are becoming more philosophical my focus is actually not that it is to understand mortality that is related to aging. We also need to understand the diseases and lifestyle we lead in our lives which can bring about mortality. Last year, there are two very important scientific publications came out that discussed the issue of mortality and its connection to aging. So this is the most important thing that we need to understand. What is the connection between mortality and aging? One of those articles published in the journal Aging talks about, and I'm quoting here, that it is essential to note that no one dies from aging itself, but rather from diseases that are age-related, even all centenarians die from age-related disease. Let us ponder on this a little bit more and think about the history of our family members or in general humankind all over the world. It is actually true that the age-related deterioration of our organs finally inflicts the mortality once that particular organ stops working and in turn all the other organs starts to shut down for example one of the major organs that i can actually talk about is heart undoubtedly heart is one of the major organ in our body pumping and distributing blood throughout the body along with nutrition this is an absolutely essential organ and of course, especially aged individuals, risk of cardiac arrest increases. And when that happens, the individual die. So this is one of the examples that an age-related disease is causing death. It may not be heart, it may be some other organ or a series of organs that can shut down one after other bring death so all in all from these examples what we are understanding is that death is actually an effect of the diseases that are being accumulated or being generated by the process of aging now the question comes now is what is aging itself so as per the textbook definition, aging can be defined as the time-related deterioration of the physiological functions necessary for survival and fertility. There are multiple things that needs to be understood in this one definition. As per the textbook definition, as it mentioned here, which actually kind of suggests that based on our historical understanding, of aging this is the definition so time related is one function here and the other function is the deterioration how it deteriorates how a living organism deteriorates over time one example the consumption of oxygen this is the simplest example but if you bear with me you will understand what I'm talking about. Oxygen is the main fuel of 
a living organism on earth without oxygen an animal except certain bacteria or virus will not survive so this is actually very important oxygen is the main driving force however what happens is that oxygen is also a highly reactive gas a simplest example on how reactive oxygen is is lying around in front of us so basically what we see is that whatever burns in this world it needs oxygen to burn it so that's exceptionally important right so we know that how reactive oxygen is now consider this particular reactive gas highly reactive gas you are inhaling and it's actually entering your body you are utilizing this oxygen to generate energy our body are made of cells and these cells has something called mitochondria which are the powerhouses or you can consider it as a generator or factory where it takes the oxygen and converts it into energy the interesting thing is that this process is not perfect the process of converting oxygen into energy is not foolproof that's why what really happens is that when oxygen is being converted to energy a lot of oxygen are left out this results in generation of a byproduct which can be toxic which are even more reactive those are called free radicals so these free radicals what they do is that because they are not being used and they are highly reactive they attack different structures inside the cells including protein molecules and convert them into non functional but toxic material which starts to accumulate in those cells after a certain amount of time when this accumulation of this toxic material is too high then the cell cannot sustain and die so basically this is the deterioration that i'm talking about there are multiple different types of deterioration that goes on over time in a living organism this is one of those there are a lot of chemicals or materials that are out there in market which claims to stop the production of these free radicals so that the deterioration cannot happen or can be slowed down so in that sense time related deterioration is evident then comes the physiological functions at an early age the cells that accumulate this damage they die out but they are replaced quite efficiently and quite frequently but later in life these cells are not being replaced which generates a void in those areas of a particular organ thus the functionality of those organs are being reduced in the later stage of age then comes the survival and fertility let's talk about fertility before we talk about survival so fertility one of the major aspect of a living organism and over time all this deterioration that is happening it is also happening in the organs that are responsible for fertility thus the fertility also reduces with time then comes the concept of survival which i have discussed before that these kind of deterioration is causing the generation of diseases which finally brings in mortality in living organisms now while this is true if you think this way that aging is particularly nothing but deterioration and accumulation of diseases then 
reducing or completely stopping deterioration and curing those particular diseases can actually be a cure for mortality. If mortality is a result of age-related deterioration and disease, then of course stopping them will bring about immortality. Now to understand how to stop aging, meaning how to stop the time-related deterioration and disease generation, we need to understand why the deterioration is happening. The article that I'm talking about, written by Mikhail Blagoxloni from Russell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, New York, what he is discussing is that there are certain types of chemical function that is going on in our body that are necessary when that particular living organism is growing and achieving its maturity. That whole process is part of the development of that particular organism. And there are certain chemical processes that are needed that drives that particular growth. What he argues that even when the individual achieves maturity, those particular chemical processes that are part of development still goes on, which causes degeneration. Let me give you an example. Say if you have fever, you take Tylenol. The physician prescribes Tylenol at a certain dose every day for a certain period of time. You of course take those so that the fever goes away. But once it goes away, you stop taking Tylenol. Because if you keep taking those, that would be an overdose. Because at that time you don't need it anymore. Same way, this is the situation with this particular chemical process needed during the developmental stage, but you don't need it anymore. Or at least you don't need it to that extent when you achieve maturity. However, those chemical processes are still on. And when unnecessary chemical processes goes on, they start causing deterioration in the tissue. The series of chemical processes that he's talking about is known as mTOR driven chemical process. So this mTOR driven chemical process, mTOR stands for mammalian target of rapamycin. It has multitude of functions. However, it has been shown that this can also be highly active in diseases such as cancer. What the author is suggesting is that controlling that particular chemical using a pharmacological drug can reduce the deterioration and even disease progression. So in many cases, it has been shown already. I will, of course, put the link of this particular publication in the description box so that you can see it on your own. So what he is suggesting is that overactivation of this particular mTOR chemical and its associated products and interactors are life-limiting. The pharmacological drug that he is talking about is called rapamycin. Rapamycin has been studied for a pretty long time. It has been studied in lower mammalian systems like mice and it has been shown that rapamycin or the administration of rapamycin in a particular dose can extend lifespan. This particular drug rapamycin may prevent both cancer and Alzheimer's disease. If rapamycin can stop certain diseases and extend lifespan, should we start taking rapamycin to delay our aging process? to stop the deterioration? No, we should not do that. Because rapamycin is a chemical 
that needs to be utilized under specific conditions. For example, if there is a particular age-related disease happening, rapamycin should be taken in a particular dose for a certain amount of time to prevent that disease to develop. So the use of rapamycin should be more personalized. A new concept just arrived in our discussion right now, which is the personalization of a particular medicine. The National Institute of Health, or NIH, has been promoting the personalized drug treatment in almost all types of diseases. Though it is hard to implement, it is important for us to understand that in this context of aging and prevention of deterioration and disease progression, the use of rapamycin has to be personalized. It has to be individual specific and disease specific instead of general administration of this drug just to prevent time-related deterioration and disease progression in all human beings. This particular pharmacological drug, rapamycin, is being tested in clinical trials. One example is a phase 2 trial that is going on on randomized bladder cancer. So the first thing that comes out from today's discussion, there are certain drugs that are already out there on aging and longevity. Compared to just 50 years ago, a 2019 estimate suggests out of every 100,000 people in US, 604 reach their 100th birthday. This is a significant improvement already. It is important for us to know that aging is not inevitable anymore. Aging is just like anything else, is an accumulation of deterioration and disease, which can be prevented. In the next part, I'm going to talk about another drug that is being used as of now even and may stop the time-related damages and disease progression. Please like and share this information. Please subscribe to the channel for more information. Stay tuned and stay with us.